Yo, what is good, people? Welcome back to another episode of the F1 2022 My Team Series here on the channel. We are at the halfway point in this season. It is the eighth race of the season, a sprint race in Austria. There is only 16 races in this season, like I mentioned at the beginning of it. Uh, we're currently flying P1 in the driver standings, if you do believe it. Check out the last episode if you haven't seen it. Belter race in Silverson, our home Grand Prix. Find out what happened there. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we did finish P2. It's spoilers on the screen, but we're currently four points ahead of Max Verstappen in the driver standings, uh, four points behind Mercedes in the constructors. Constructor standings is a four way battle for the title. I mean, even Ferrari's only 10 points behind us, so that constructors uh, title is going to go right down to the wire. Our teammate Jensen Button only contributing 12 points out of our 120. So, yeah, we definitely need to look at a new teammate, is what I'm thinking. And I believe the contract renewal period is actually at the end of this episode. So, early shout out to the crowd. Make sure you just leave a comment. Uh, who do you want to see in that second seat? Jensen Button, I thought he was going to smash it this season for us, but we have a, a, a car capable of winning. Uh, races and he's just not performing in it we skip q1 because by now you should know we are fast enough uh, our car is good enough by itself with no driver in it to get through to q2 so we skip q1 a very wet intermediate session there in uh, q1 in q2 though the rain has gone away sun started to come out we're back onto slick tires we're on soft tires here qualifying is complete we get one more lap uh, to go in this uh, session, riding that sausage curb a bit on exit, losing a bit of grip through turn one. But I'm hoping, with it being uh, the last lap, and we've crossed the line, but to but started the lap, if that makes sense. So it's the last lap of the session. I'm hoping it's going to be a good one because the track will be even uh, better than it is at the start of the session. Track evolution, especially in the rain, means normally the last person to cross the line is fastest. Uh, so let's see if we can convert that theory into fact. Uh, so we're currently two tenths up in the Delta anyway, which put us, uh, well, currently P14. So we definitely do need to improve, hopefully by more than uh, two tenths as well, because P14 is not a place we'd like to be, uh, especially getting into this race weekend in uh, Austria. Max Verstappen, uh, I was going to say his home Grand Prix, but it's his team's home Grand Prix. He'll be looking to try and score some big points for his team Red Bull, with it being the Red Bull ring. Uh, we've got one more corner to go, though. Can we improve on our time? Coming through, getting on a throttle as early as possible, pushing it right up on the curb. Uh, we actually lose time through there. 1.5 tenths quicker. Is it going to be even good enough to get through to Q3? It's not. P12. We're going to start P12 for the sprint race. Uh, unfortunate to see. I don't know if we had a setup issue because, of course, Q1 uh, was wet and I might have put too much downforce on the, the wings, but even our teammate Jensen Button being three tenths quicker. We haven't seen that all season. So, yeah, definitely something wrong there. We're going to start um, the, the sprint race the from P12. Today's exciting sprint. An immense lap from Carlos Sainz yesterday puts him in pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Russell, Norris and Sir Lewis Hamilton and Ocon. Button, Fernando Alonso, Perez and Max Verstappen. Sonoda, the owner driver, Robert Schwartzman and Mick Schumacher. Vettel, Magnussen, Alex Albon and Pierre Gasly. Stroll, Latifi, Joe and Daniel Tickton. Which of these drivers will get pole position today? We'll soon find out. Our teammate Jensen Button fighting for his seat then, starting P7 on the grid, not too shabby. Uh, and our rival, Max Verstappen, right in front, we almost rear-end him uh, as we get a good, not optimal, but a good parking spot on the grid there. Uh, but yeah, so Verstappen is only one car ahead of us. Well, two cars, but one, there's only one car between us, I meant to say. Lights out and away we go in this sprint race. And that one car between us, Yuki Tsunoda, a flying star for Yuki there. He's up alongside Max already, down into turn one. Can we send it up the inside of Yuki? No, we can't. He goes around the outside of Max. And there goes somebody around the outside of us. One of the Haas cars think that might be... Uh, I don't even know who drives for Haas this season. Robert Schwartzman it is. I was going to say Schumacher and Magnussen. But there are uh, Aston Martin and Williams, respectively. Up the inside we go, though, of Schwartzman late on the brakes into that turn three. Uh, and we almost rear-end Max Verstappen. I think there might have been a bit of contact there with Verstappen because we do get a warning for a collision. But in taking Schwartzman, we also take Yuki Tsunoda. Tsunoda's lost the place to Schwartzman too. So Tsunoda down to P13. Uh, and obviously, remember, that it's only the top eight that get 
uh, points in a sprint race. So if we want to try and get some points here to make um, some moves in the championship uh, or make some progress in the championship, we need to definitely definitely uh, move up some more places but our main rival right now we can see him in front Max Verstappen uh, he's on the gearbox there of Fernando Alonso off to a quick start obviously only 12 laps in this sprint race no pit stops so you don't have to worry about that just medium tires all the way till the end I'm very sloppy for me through sector three there throwing it off the track uh, there goes Alonso uh, and Verstappen battling through turn one can we capitalize on any sort of slow cars here through turn one yes we can perfectly set up through turn one and look at our launch out of turn one there we've done a double overtake on Alonso and Verstappen now we're trying to set up one into the next breaking zone on Alonso and Perez can we have four overtakes in two corners up the inside of uh, Ocon there bit of contact with our front wheel and his rear wheel uh, unfortunately we couldn't make that stick but a perfect double overtake through turn one on Alonso and Verstappen that was great uh, driving from me I knew them two would be slow through turn one going too wide so we set it up perfectly there's some contact between Ocon and Perez as well this guy Esteban Ocon is an absolute lunatic take his seat away from him please I don't like the guy uh, up the inside he goes though on Perez same thing again can we capitalize on any mistake by these two drivers going slow racing against each other here Perez round the outside Ocon pushing him wide onto the curb great racing to see and there's Fernando Alonso as we're going slow behind these two guys um, who are going slow then there goes Alonso trying to make a move around the outside more contact between, between Perez and Ocon Alonso round the outside through the final turn we managed to stay ahead of Alonso though uh, and here comes Max Verstappen Verstappen now uh, DRS enabled perfect timing for that uh, Perez up the inside of Ocon through turn one and Perez oversteers and corrects it turns into us and we lose our front wing we've lost half of our front wing Sergio Perez has turned into us after correcting some oversteer we've still got good straight line speed though minus the front wing and down into the breaking zone of turn three round the outside of Ocon can we make a double overtake yes we can we've got past Perez we've got past Ocon and now the next man in front of us is our teammate Jensen Button he's three seconds ahead though and now we have half a front wing our engineer wants us to pit it's only 12 laps it's a sprint race there's no point coming into a pit stop because we'll just finish dead last and you can see the damage to our front wing there there's a huge chunk taken out of it, it looks like a bite and we've also lost our rear wing end plate on the right hand side so that's definitely going to cost us some performance some lap time uh, and a lot of downforce as we understeer through every single corner for until the end of the race uh, Robert Swartzman out of the session though as we were about to be overtaken by Max Verstappen here's Swartzman trying to make a move on one of the uh, the McLarens there and a big crash into the back of one of the Red Bulls Robert Swartzman out of the session he tries to make a move the Red Bull covers the inside looks like they're coming into the pits actually one of the Red Bulls must have taken front wing damage and come into the pits there uh, and yeah Robert Swartzman out of the session so a safety car has come out in this sprint race perfect timing for us because we were about to be overtaken by Max Verstappen into turn one he had a great exit uh, and a lot of speed and that is DRS wing open perfect for us though that safety car because of it's la uh, it's allowed us to catch up to that pack at the front Jensen Button the man at the back of that pack uh, our teammate of course and we get a decent exit out of uh, the final turn Lance Stroll out of the session what is going on in this race we're down into turn one up the inside of our teammate Jensen Button tight on the exit but we do manage to get ahead of Jensen and hopefully now uh, the the engineers are going to be on the radio saying to Jensen do not let Max get past you hold up Max Verstappen as much as you can because we're trying to chase down Lewis Hamilton and this top four here even though them uh, I think it's uh, Hamilton Russell um, Hamilton Russell Norris and one of the Ferraris so the, the three Mercedes powered cars are going to be absolutely rapid especially down the long straights here in Austria but can we try and catch them up still somehow even with half a wing the answer is no as we start our last lap here we're going to be 5.6 seconds behind Hamilton just showing you the difference in speed uh, between the two cars and with the damage and also you see the understeer through turn one with worn, worn tyres as well plus no front wing the, the understeer was ridiculous bro let me tell you that uh, but our teammate Jensen Button right on our gearbox is Jensen going to try and put a spoil to the party here uh, as we see massive rain clouds moving in in Austria Carlos Sainz wins the sprint race but uh, can we cross the line in P5 it'll be a great uh, start on position in the race yes we can Button not going to be able to make a move so we've come up from P12 or 11 P12 or 11 I don't know to P5 it's a very successful 
uh, sprint race in my opinion if you ask me and our teammate Jensen just behind us in P6 if we took P5 and P6 in qualifying I wouldn't have actually minded that um, so that's basically what sprint racing is it's the for the qualifying for the feature race if you didn't know that if you didn't know that you should have but we get four points Max Verstappen only gets one there um, Sergio Perez finishes P14 Charles Leclerc P15 absolutely massive Ocon down in P18 so uh, a messed up grid order for the sprint race I mean for the feature race sorry Verstappen down in P8 to start on the grid Magnussen in P10 and the Williams again uh, so shout out Kevin Magnussen but Let's get to this feature race, see if we can turn it into a, a podium possibly this from P5. Then, race day in Spielberg for this year's Austrian Grand Prix. Not long to go before our drivers hurtle off the line and into the first turn, the Nicky Lauda curve. It was renamed in 2019 in memory of one of Formula One's most beloved figures. It's a short lap here in Spielberg with just 10 corners, seven to the right and three to the left, making up the total distance of 2.6 miles. And expect to see a lot of cars running wide today, especially through the last corner, as the wet conditions make the cars skittish through the downhill section. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position. Edging out Lando Norris, he'll start from P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, the owner driver, Jensen Button and Fernando Alonso. Verstappen, Mick Schumacher, Magnussen, and Yuki Tsunoda, Gasly, Albon, Sergio Perez, and Leclerc, Latifi, Tictum, Esteban Ocon, and Guan Yu Zhou, Vettel, Schwartzman, Sainz. They'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty, and Lance Stroll brings the grid to a close. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. And I'm joined once again by Anthony Davidson to bring you the lowdown for today's race. Let's have a chat about McLaren. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. Carlos Sainz, the man who won the sprint race and got okay, pole position for right this now, race today, is going to start from P21 after a penalty. So, absolutely massive to see that. Uh, can we try and extend our lead in the Drivers' Championship? Who knows? We get an optimal park and space uh, in the grid slot, which is what we love to see. We haven't done that for quite some time. We're starting from P4 here in this race. It's very wet, but it's going to go dry later on. Mad weather conditions in Austria. Lights out and away we go. Quick stars for Lewis Hamilton. I think that is off the line. Uh, possibly George Russell, one of the, uh, the makes. Covering the inside completely as we send it up the inside. And he pushes completely over the curb. I think that is George Russell. Yes, it is. A bit of contact with Russell through turn one. Lando Norris, the man behind. We did manage to make a move on Lando. We're up into P3 already. Talking into that slipstream of the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. Can we have a look up the inside into turn three? Can we get it slowed down offline in the wet conditions here? Yes, we can. Are we ahead, though, of Lewis? No, it's going to be wheel to wheel through this next straight uh, and downhill now. Look at the speed of that Mercedes. Even though we're using our battery charge, Lewis absolutely flying ahead and down into the braking zone. We're going to try and stick it up the inside. Who's going to come out ahead here? A lot more grip on the outside. I find through that corner. And there goes Lewis Hamilton, but he does wobble a bit and he has to tuck in behind us. Uh, struggling for grip, obviously, with it being in the wet regardless of where the, the traction is in the dry obviously it doesn't matter because we are in wet conditions here uh, in austria very tricky on the first lap especially uh, until that dry line starts to come through where the cars are driving very tricky uh, to fight for track position George Russell flying ahead though at the start of this race uh, Lando Norris sticking with the pack at the front as well and even our teammate Jensen is doing well to keep up with us and this is going to be an, a, hor a horrible horrible train uh, to, to be stuck behind uh, Lewis Hamilton and Lando Norris is Lewis going to be close enough for a move into turn one no he doesn't he doesn't even think about it I think he probably could have sent it up the inside there uh, but for some reason he decided against it and Lewis has actually lost the place to Lando now obviously no DRS even though we're on lap three because of course the wet conditions they do not uh, use DRS when it is wet just for a safety uh, thing I believe is, is why they don't do it uh, very easy to harvest battery I find in, in wet races we've set a purple sector one here 
on lap three and a green sector two. We're finding our groove clearly uh, by the, the split times in the Delta. That's where I'm getting that information from. Even though there is no DRS, it's nice to see we've pulled a second ahead of Lando Norris, the car behind, setting a purple sector 3-2 and taking the fastest lap of the race, trying to put in some lap times to catch George Russell, but George has great pace as well. We've just seen he took the fastest lap before we took him. Um, so uh, even here, you can see four laps later, lap seven, 3.1 the gap in front. Uh, Lando lapping faster behind us. He's pulled a gap to put, uh, 0.7, no DRS still. And as we get uh, the zoom in on the map there, you can see there's a yellow flag down at turn three. Uh, but the car's carried on moving, so let's find out what happened there. Is one of the Alvataris off the track, uh, and they just reverse back onto the track. Very dangerous to do. And then they stop, and I'm thinking, what are they doing? They stopped on track, a car goes past, and then they get going again. It's going to be Lance Stroll. Uh, at least he didn't just drive back onto the track when all the cars were coming. That could have been a crazy crash. It would have been quite entertaining for the game, I can't lie. But... Um, the the wetness is going away now. The wetness is that even English wetness going away. Our engineer lets us know. Might be time to come in and change. Put on some soft tires. Go out on the soft and then go to mediums later on. Run a little two stop strategy. How do you feel about that? And I was like, you know what? I actually do feel like it's time for a crossover. There's still a spits of rain coming down, but the track is definitely drying up uh, compared to to what it was at the start. Struggling for grip a little bit, but soft tyres, easier to manage in wet conditions than mediums or hards for sure. So let's come in. Uh, let's change these tyres. The gap to Russell is 2.3. Uh, can we try and run an undercut or something on Russell and maybe make up that gap? No, we can't because he's coming to the pits too, as has Lando Norris behind us. Um, and obviously because Russell's come in, his teammate Hamilton stays out. And because we've come in, our teammate Jensen stays out. So Hamilton and Jensen Button staying out uh, on the intermediate tyres as we come in four fresh brand new soft tires are we gonna have a good pit stop here 2.5 seconds it's mid it's not great it's not perfect you know what i mean we're gonna come out here uh, are we any closer to george russell maybe he had a bad pit stop let's find out maybe lando had a bad one behind us uh, the gap to russell 2.1 pretty much the gap it was when we came into the pits the gap behind to norris though 2.4 we've made up nearly a second on lando norris just in the pit lane so he must have had a stinker of a stop uh, and here at the end of the next lap Hamilton and Button do come in but by the time they come in uh, the strategy is different and them two have gone onto hard tyres Jensen Button with the fastest lap of the race at the moment onto hard tyres Lewis Hamilton with hard tyres they're running a one stop strategy and we're on the two stop as is Russell as is Norris this is absolutely massive to see uh, as Lewis Hamilton comes out in P5 on hard tyres just 4.6 seconds behind us so I'm thinking have we messed up here Hamilton and Button running p5 and p6 four seconds behind us and they've got no more pit stops left in this race with like 30 or 20 laps to go we might have messed up with the strategy and it might be a button uh, hamilton one two who knows but there goes lando norris up the inside the battle for p2 we saw this in silverstone last time out who's going to come out ahead here uh, in this battle for p2 last time obviously it was us are we going to be able to have the same look this time as lando sticks it up the inside into the downhill breaking zone we go around the outside like i mentioned i like going around the outside of this corner Seems to be more traction, but Lando up the inside. We have the inside for the next corner, and we do stay ahead. That is why I do like going on the outside. It looks like Lando at a moment there. You saw a little wobble, maybe a snap of oversteer, which he had to catch and lift off the throttle. Uh, so we love to see that. We're staying ahead. 20 laps to go in this race. Same thing again, trying to defend against Lando. Look at that closing speed into the braking zone. Uh, he goes He goes very slow as he hits the apex there. I wonder if he uh, had to compromise his line because of where we were going. I'm not too sure. But George Russell comes into the pits on lap 20. We decided to copy him, come into the pits as well. The gap behind before the pit stop to Norris was 1.4. Uh, Norris comes in at the same time. Max Verstappen up into P5 now for his pit stop. Uh, let's see where he goes. And Hamilton, there he goes, past us. Hamilton into P1 now. Jensen Button also passes us. Those guys staying out on the hard tyres. This could be a really risky, risky move. We, we've gone from battling for P2. It's coming out of the pits in P5. And we might not even be on the podium in this race here. We're not even coming out in P5. We're coming out in P7 behind Sonoda and Schumacher. No stress though, because of course, those guys have got a pit. They're on soft tyres. We made up like a bit of time to Norris in the pit lane again. Um, so shout out to our pit crew for two good pit stops. And shout out to McLaren's pit crew for two bad pit stops. You'd love to see it. Uh, we're going to have DRS on Schumacher and Sonoda. Hopefully these two stinkers don't hold us up for too long. Because these guys are going to be running slow in their stinky little cars. <laughs> the Alpine and the Aston Martin just not very competitive cars in our career mode this year this season here we go then Schumacher pulls to the right because he's coming into the pits can we avoid a collision go around the outside yes we can 
uh, and luckily the beauty of it he comes into the pits we still have DRS on him down the main straight even though he's in the pits um, so we're going to pull a bit of time there uh, and here we go we're back into P4 and after like I say after battling for P2 we're going to be 8.5 seconds behind George Russell with 14 laps to go 8.5 seconds we've gone from battling for P2 to not even being on the podium in Austria you hate to see it Jensen Button our teammates 11.4 ahead and yeah the, the one stop strategy they obviously didn't even mean it because they just don't double stack the AI on this game so it's not like Jensen would have came in at the same time as us stays out get that one stop strategy uh, and yeah they're, they're absolutely flying ahead but George Russell is absolutely flying ahead quicker than I am so Russell has caught up to Button and they're battling wheel to wheel through some of these corners costing themselves time the 11 second gap is down to 8 so George if you just keep battling with Jensen for a bit Jensen if you keep battling with George hold him up a bit uh, well I say that and he's been overtaken now but you hold him up a bit there we go Button fighting back if you look on the top left you can see the names flipping places all the time uh, but yeah anyway our teammate comes into the pits Jensen Button he was running in P3 7 seconds ahead and he's into the pits with 11 laps to go in this race and surely that's not for new tyres we can see Jensen coming into the pits now check his front wing he's missing his front wing end plate on the right hand side so that means George Russell's punched him in the face took his front wing off and oh, you hate to see it Jensen Button was on for a podium spot there but like we, we don't really hate to see it because now we're up into the podium spot <laughs> we're currently sat in P3 trying to chase down George Russell he was absolutely flying uh, and you see he's nearly caught up to his teammate Lewis Hamilton already Hamilton obviously struggling uh, with those worn hard tyres both safety car out Charles Leclerc out of the session Red Bull coming into the pit lane and a big crash a big crash involving one of the Alpines too taking off his front wing end plate as Charles car actually jumped I don't know how you can jump in a car he must have pressed A on his controller or something like watch this he actually jumps in his car obviously the Alpine has passed the pit lane entry already um, so he can't go in for a new front wing but Charles Leclerc out of the session we saw that with in the sprint race one of the Red Bulls coming in and then Swartman went into the, into the back of him the AI are just so stupid around Austria with the pit lane uh, but that is closed an 8 second gap to the Mercedes in front of us so shout out to Charles Leclerc for crashing there and a great exit out to the final corner on George Russell great piece of racing by me if you saw that there if you know what I did there you're a true racer round turn 1 round the outside riding the curb a little and exit but we managed to get past George Russell there we'll have a flashback to see what I've just done there Watch this, as we as we get towards the finish line, it's still yellow flags, no overtaking. I lift off the throttle, then we cross the finish line, and I get back on it as the green flags come out. Max Verstappen done something similar to Lewis Hamilton in a race the other day in real life, and that is where I copied that move from. That's a great, great racing move, because if we kept flat out on the throttle there, we would have overtaken Russell before. Like I was saying before the, the team radio interrupted me, we would have overtaken Russell before the finish line, which is obviously illegal. You can't overtake your own yellow flags. Uh, both, yeah, great racing move for me to get ahead of Russell. DRS enabled on with two laps to go here. We got some information on Hamilton there to say his front wing is damaged, so he's going to be slow through the corners. We're lapping four tenths quicker than Hamilton. Now we have DRS on Hamilton, down uh, past turn two, into turn three, trying to set up a move up the inside. Hamilton defending hard, late on the brakes. Who's going to come out later? Hamilton stays ahead, but we're going to have DRS. He gets unsettled on the exit, riding a lot of that curve. We have DRS down the main straight. Well, this isn't even the main straight, down the back straight here. And we are going to be ahead of Lewis Hamilton. We've took P1 in this race here. It's crazy to see uh, how this race has uh, panned out. I thought at one point we weren't even going to get a podium. Now we're on for a win. We've took P1. Lewis Hamilton just three tenths behind us. Uh, he's got one lap left to try and make an impact, try and make a move. If he can get DRS down the straight, I don't know his old hard tyres are going to be really struggling uh, for grip at the moment George Russell right on his gearbox as well and Russell pulling out looking to make a move on his teammate uh, as we get towards the second to last corner Russell ahead Hamilton dropping back to P4 Carlos Sainz has got ahead and Carlos Sainz is up into P2 he's got ahead of Russell we'll see a flashback in a minute to see what happened there but as we start the final lap of the race here we go then it is contact between the two Mercedes Russell crashes into Hamilton taking off his front wing Russell gets unsettled on the exit and Carlos Sainz flies through there's our teammate Jensen Button battling with Max Verstappen down into turn 1 this is a crazy end to the race here it got a bit um, stagnant towards the middle of the race and I felt like it was nothing was happening but this ending is absolutely crazy we finally 
flying the checkered flag. We're gonna win the race here in Austria. What a what a race. What a weekend. What a weekend. We qualify P12, finish the sprint race in P5, and then finish the actual race in P1 with a race win. You love to see it. Carlos Sainz got driver of the day. He finished P2 after starting P21 on the grid, I think, something like that. Crazy for Carlos. Uh, and yeah, man, just what a race. What a race. Uh, Lewis Hamilton, unfortunate for him, getting battered by his teammates on the last lap. Um, George Russell, obviously an, an aggressive driver in this game, taking off Lewis's front wing. He took off Jensen's front wing. And who knows what would have happened if Jensen didn't come into that, that, that pit stop. We could have been on the, te on the podium with our teammates because uh, he would have still been out there with Lewis Hamilton. Both picking up that trophy. Shout out to the team. You you guys are amazing, man, as Hamilton would say. Oh, I couldn't have done it without you, man. So, yeah, there we go. We win the race. Um, it seemed done nothing for us. <laughs> but, yeah, shout out to the team and the guys. Well, to be fair, the pit crew. Fucking no, the pit crew. I'm not even shouting the pit crew out because we had the slowest possible stops both times. Uh, but, yeah, massive points for us. 29 points on the weekend. Four for the sprint race. 25 uh, for the race win there. Don't know who got fastest lap of the race. Uh, it was Lando Norris. Ran a three-stop strategy and finished P17. But at least he got fastest lap. So, yeah, well done, Lando. That's a saving grace for your weekend, mate. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Lewis Hamilton, the only man in the top 10 running a one-stop strategy or the top 14 with the one-stop finishing P4. If it wasn't for his teammate, who knows? Uh, he could have finished on the podium. Yeah, so let's check out the driver standings. Jensen Button, shout out to him actually, because he got 13 points on the weekend. Driver standings, we're currently 24 points ahead of Max Verstappen. That's my number as well, so it's written in the stars. Shout out, uh, Kobe. So we move up into P3 as well in the uh, constructors. Massive news. One point behind Mercedes, 23 behind Red Bull. This could be a season to remember. This really could be a season to remember. It's heating up. Contract renewal time. 23 points behind Red Bull. 23. Who are we going to get as our second driver to help us close that gap? We can't keep doing it all ourselves. Jensen, mate, I think your time is up. It's time to go. Rest in peace, Claude. It is time to go, Jensen. Yeah? So, we're going to get some upgrades first, and then we'll look at the driver's market at the end of the episode. Picking up a major engine power upgrade here. You can see in the bottom right just how much that will improve our engine. We have the worst engine on the grid. I wouldn't think it because we're quite fast in a straight line. Uh, but we haven't upgraded our fuel. Um, you see there, we haven't upgraded the fuel. So that's why it looks so bad on the leaderboards. It's a bit um, misleading, the leaderboards. But we pick up the brakes upgrade there as well. Uh, in the chassis oh yeah i didn't mention this uh, in the last episode i said i was going to mention it in this episode as we check out the driver's markers we've got 11 million just have a look at the driver's market people and let me know in the comments who we should get um but yeah i'm looking to take a grid penalty in uh, belgium in spa because you know we need to take a grid penalty eventually in this season i'm looking to take it in spa that's why i was focusing all of these upgrades to come in tire wear and brakes before spa so then we can try and run a one-stop strategy providing it's dry in spa um and yeah Run a one-stop strategy with a grid penalty. Do a Max Verstappen, try and win the race from the back of the grid. It might be magical. Who knows? But we need a second driver to help us because if we can't win that race, we need someone who can. The last man we looked at there, Ayrton Senna. Only 10 million. Ayrton Senna, that's the guy I'm eyeing up as our teammates for the next half of this season. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. You know the vibes. I'll catch us next time for the French Grand Prix, and you'll see who our new teammate is. Take it easy.